Correlational studies tell us about the relationship between different variables, and it can also tell us about the strength of that relationship. What do I mean by that? Well, when we say that two things correlate with each other, we're actually saying two things. The first is that we're saying that the two things vary together. And by that we mean that they change together. And because they change together, we have reason to suspect that, or, or we hope that, one of these things can be used to predict the other thing. This might be best understood through examples. So let's say that we have toothbrushing and then we also have whiteness of teeth. And we suspect that toothbrushing and whiteness of teeth vary together. So we hope that as one increases, that the other one will increase as well. And that's what we want to show. And since they would increase together, this is what we would call a positive correlation. We'll talk about that more in a bit. So if I was to graph this, this is what we would see. I'm going to put teeth whiteness on here. And let's say that we just have some whiteness scale that we got from a dentist. And then on this axis, I'm going to put the number of times we've brushed our teeth. And we have lower numbers here, so here's zero and here's one. And let's say we have higher number up here, maybe 100. And maybe this scale also, maybe this scale goes from one to 10. So if we were to graph this, if we were to graph toothbrushing versus whiteness of teeth, we might expect to find something like this. And note that each of these dots represents a, a different data point. Notice that as one increases, the other one does as well. And aside from just telling us the relationship between these two variables, which is itself very important, this graph can also help us predict other data points. So where do we think that the next point on this plot will be? Do, do we think it's going to be here or, or do we think it's going to be down here? Well, there's a trend in this positive direction. And so we would assume that we would continue to see this trend that the number of times we've brushed our teeth is increasing along with our, the whiteness of our teeth. However, just because two things seem like they vary or change together does not necessarily indicate that the two of them are actually related. They could actually be driven by some kind of third factor, or maybe there's some kind of flaw in the system or bug in the plan. To illustrate that, I present to you the famous internet graph of global average temperature versus number of pirates. And as you can see, as global temperature increases, we see a decrease in the number of pirates. So notice how instead of having zero on this side, here we're having zero on this side. And so the numbers are increasing as we move to the left. And so you can clearly see here that there's a correlation between global average temperature and a decrease in the number of pirates that we find on the high seas. Now, are these two factors actually related to each other? No, not in the slightest. This is just some kind of a blip in the system. I mean, we could replace number of pirates with number of iPods. Or here's one iPod, maybe Steve Jobs' first iPod, and then here's the thousand million that we have today. And we would get something similar. But notice that global average temperature and number of iPods have nothing to do with each other, not in the slightest. It just so happens that they trend together, but they actually have no relationship to each other. And this leads us to our next and very important point. Correlation does not imply causation. And write that down and say it out loud 10 or more times because this is something that you're going to need to know. Thinking about our first example about toothbrushing and the whiteness of teeth, you might be tempted to come away with the conclusion that brushing your teeth more will give you whiter teeth. But that is not what this graph actually says. It could be that those with naturally whiter teeth tend to brush their teeth more often. Or maybe it's actually driven by some kind of third variable like maybe wealth or socioeconomic status. Maybe wealthier families might have more money to spend on dental care. So remember, correlation does not imply causation. And I know that this might seem silly and arbitrary and that there might be cases where it seems to be 100% clear what the direction of the effect is 
and maybe that is true. But the thing that you need to walk away from this video with is the idea that correlational studies on their own cannot actually prove that that is the case. It cannot actually prove that one thing causes the other thing. And remember, you need to know this not just for your psychology class, but also for everyday life. Keep this in mind when you see yet another report that says that video games make kids violent. Is that a conclusion that you could draw if the data looked something like this? Sure. But maybe people who are naturally violent are more likely to play violent video games in the first place. Or maybe, like the case of pirates and global warming, there is no causation at all. This is just something to keep in mind whenever you see the news reporting on some correlational study. You need to be actively critical of what they're saying.